Let's jump to this next story. Another reason why they don't like us. Air Force gender inclusive training tells cadets to not use mom and dad. Wow. Well, I'm confident we're going to defeat Russia in this upcoming World oh, War Three. How about you guys? Well, I mean, that's what I'm thinking is that it, you, you look back to World War Two, you know, the Battle of the Bulge, you've had these like massive tank battles. There had to have been a time when, you know, before a shot is fired, everyone hops out of the tanks and says, okay, what are your correct pronouns? Right? <laughs> yeah. That's how it worked. Yeah. Right? I remember that on D. Uh, the, the, I watched an old uh, war documentary about D-Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, before they even fought, the, the U the U boats lay land, everybody walks out peacefully, shakes hands, and the Americans ask the Germans their pronouns. They all agreed, <laughs> then they went back in the boats, backed up, and then stormed the beach. It's true. 100%. I mean, I, I have to be honest, like, if if the reality of future warfare was arguments, I'd, I'd be okay with that. I'd, I'd prefer that, actually, because, you know, war sucks. And so if, like, boats crash land on the beach and they run out and they're carrying, like, you know, plushies, and then they run up to each other and they're like, you smell, you smell, dude. Ah! And that's like all war was. I think that's an improvement. Honestly, like at, the, at this point, I think something that, you know, we've seen from the past 20 years when it was the U.S. engaged in the global war on terror. And then um, I, I think the Syrian conflict was a great example is you're seeing less and less of, uh, you know, large world actors, the United States, major powers, China, trying to engage in actual like open warfare right they'll 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 fund a side they'll arm a side but they don't want to necessarily get entangled in the conflict themselves like uh i think prime example is you bring up uh china and taiwan people are like oh my god when, when when is china gonna like have their ships hit the hit, hit the beaches of taiwan and storm it and well, I mean, I think China's, it's become pretty clear to them that we can just strangle countries at this point with economic might, you know? Like, what's the need to have to invade America when we can use Amazon to make this country dependent on us? Yeah. Amazon's the creepiest thing ever. It's incredible. Like, if, if, if you were gonna come to me and, and talk about some kind of nightmare dystopian future and then tried claiming like Neuralink and all that stuff, and I'd be like, yeah, yeah, you know, maybe, who knows? But if you come to me and tell me that you know, if, if a guy came to me and said he was from the future, a nightmare dystopia with Terminators and everything, and they're all run by Amazon, I'd bet, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. You know, because Amazon's a creepy company. Just they, It's just the control they have, the way they're destroying mom and pop shops and small businesses. We really are moving towards this world where, I don't know how to describe it, techno-communism? Yeah. It maybe is one way to describe it. You're, you're, you're going to get UBI from the government. You're going to go on Amazon and you're going to, you, you, you have 1,800 credits per, per month to select an item. It's like, I believe I'll choose this blue. Well, that's the thing cloth. is like when, when Yang ran on the on the UBI thing, you know, what I'm surprised more people didn't question is, okay, if you create this dependence on making sure that like, okay, I will get this, you know, dole from the government, the next step for them then becomes, what if you do something that displeases me? You know, what if your social score or social credit score goes down? Right. We're gonna cut how much money you get and you're gonna have to be hungry. And maybe that'll teach you a lesson of what happens when you don't follow the regime's orders. Yeah, it's, it's a carbon social credit score. It's what the World Economic Forum is talking about. They literally just wrote an article bragging about how everyone complied with the lockdowns, which means the next climate change lockdowns are more likely to be complied with as well. That's literally the did thinking you see, of a lot of these people. Did you see the, uh, the power companies? I, I think it was in Nevada, uh, maybe California as well, that was sending notifications, this is during the blackouts mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the heat waves, that they were sending out notifications on the thermostat, smart thermostats in people's houses, saying, I'm sorry, but you can't, turned down this was uh Den denver i believe yeah, yeah. You, 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 and and it was because they opted into a pro like an energy uh -huh. saving program yeah that's how it all starts and, right and, and that's the thing is just that opt into the government program we'll help take well, care of you no the, but but what happens is you're getting it installed and the guy goes would you like to opt into our energy saver program <laughs> what is what does that mean it means you get 100 bucks per year off your bill and they go sign me up <laughs> and, and they scroll through the terms of service they don't read and they click check and then next thing they know they can't turn their air conditioning on. And, and the thing is, is that when they said that amount, they're like, okay, it'll take $100 off or 20 months. I can't remember how much they offered uh, for these people to join the Energy Saver program. Who's going to be the most incentivized to opt in? Poor, poor people. people. The poor. Exactly. Right. Yep. Well, I mean, you think I'm going to give up my it, air conditioning exactly. for the poors? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Harumph. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they live, man. They want their private jets. I like all the private jets flying into the, the climate change summit. Yeah. Yeah. The real meeting is them going like, how do we keep this going? It, like, that's we exactly got to stop the poor people. That's exactly it. The it's, poor people don't deserve 
refrigerators Meat. or or clean water or showers. Y'all can have cold crickets and cold showers because I ain't giving up my steak. I imagine that's what Bill Gates is saying. And I mean, like I've always said, is that to a certain extent, they want to say you have to eat the bugs not because it's ecologically sound, but because they'd like to be able to show their power. Like, yeah. if you can make your enemies or your subordinates eat bugs, it's like, what won't it's you It's like the poop water. Do? They want you to drink the poop exactly. water as well, the sewage water. Yeah. And, and there was an did article. You guys, did you yep. guys see California is going to allow composting of humans? Yeah. And no. The, the funny thing yeah, is... I saw that. Yeah, it's horrific, Into dude. soil. Now, now, hold on, hold on. It's not immediately bad, but there are some concerns. Uh, the idea is that you can be cremated, you can be embalmed or whatever, or you can be dropped into this vat, you know, of, of dirt and every, you get turned into dirt, right? It doesn't immediately mean they're going to use the dirt for food, the soil, I should say, because it's, it's going to be fresh human compost soil. In, uh, I think, Colorado, I'm not sure, they ban the sale of this soil for uh, food for human consumption. Hmm. But questions then are, is the soil being transferred to farms for grain for cow consumption? Right. Like, mm -hmm. To what degree are you okay with I, eating former human? Like, is it, if a corn grows from the human, is then eaten by a pig, <laughs> are you okay eating that pig? I've seen The Lion King. Uh, the circle of life. <laughs> right. I know how this story ends. We will be eating the human soil. Yep. That's right. We will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only a matter of time, especially with the food shortages and everything going on. Soil and green is people, man. You, have you guys seen that movie Elysium? No. I, I didn't see that, no. It's like, I think it's Matt Damon. Yeah. And it's like everyone on there's Earth. There's like a utopian like layer and, and then there's yeah, one it's of a the big people space who can afford ring, it. And all the rich people live up there and then like they have the cure for cancer and the poor people lived on an earth and they all speak Spanish and the rich people speak French. I thought it was kind of funny. They got it wrong though. What, what's, what's really, what it really should have been is all the poor people on earth working, eating crickets and everyone up in the big ring are trafficking children. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's, that's the real, real. Voice, right? The big ring is a private island. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even kidding. We know what they do. Yeah. And I wonder if one of the reasons they want to shut down ch like channels like this is because we will call them out and they're probably thinking, imagine what we could get away with. I actually, I, I, here's, here's what I think happens. You get, it's like, imagine it's 10 years ago and Epstein's on his island sitting there smoking a cigar next to his picture of Bill Clinton in a dress. And there's like this 18 year old kid who's in, he's a newbie in the whole trafficking kids thing, you know, a new recruit. And he goes, you know, kid, before the internet, nobody knew we were doing this. <laughs> now it's like, I had to have a run in with the FBI. Oof. Then 2020 comes along, this kid's now, you know, a bit older, and he's like, man, what, how much fun, how cool would it have been back in the 60s when no one knew you were committing atrocities against children, right? <laughs> I think these people know this, and they're, and they're really talking about, like, when we were younger, nobody knew we were doing it. No journalist was allowed on the island. Anybody who tried to write about it would be ridiculed, or we would simply go to the boss of the company and say, do not write it, and they would. Look at ABC News with that Amy Rohrbach woman. Yep, yep. she and said, then, we had this guy dead to rights, like on video. Right. And Clinton. And here's Jeez. the thing. That's why they don't like Project Veritas. Oh, yeah. I was talking to a guy, and, and, and I, I passively bring up Veritas, and he goes, oh, but they're, they're all lying, you know? And then I was like, what do you lie about? And he was like, well, I don't know, I read somewhere, and I'm like, no, I'll tell you what. James O'Keefe got leaked this video exposing Epstein, and boy, were they pissed. So I'm willing to bet they pulled out all the stops with their billions of dollars trying to fame that guy. And he was like, well. And I was like, do you think these elite pedos who are on private islands, you think they wouldn't spend at least a million dollars lying about somebody? And he's like, well, oh yeah, I don't know. <laughs> or covering up their traces and their tracks. Uh, uh, Bill Gates literally funds the corporate media. He gives hundreds of millions of dollars to many corporate media outlets. And of course, this buys him favor. This buys him PR. This and buys him marketing. And, and this is why Jeff they Bezos, promote his businesses. Jeff Bezos owns the Washington yes. Post. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and when uh, Bill Gates was asked about Epstein, he goes, well, he's dead now anyway. What did he yeah. say? Is that what he said? Like something like that. that. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, doesn't matter. He's dead. At this yeah. point, <laughs> like, at this point, why does it even matter? Yeah. You yeah. know, the quote Hillary. Well, he was like, Clinton. "Well, he's dead, so." Yeah. <laughs> like, geez. He looks over at Hillary and she's like, "I did my job." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to do a compilation of those two videos right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Send it to me, please, immediately on Twitter. Yeah. I might hire you at Luke We Are Change. Uh, but but look, it's a fun, it's a fun ride while it lasts. I suppose the the, the October surprise, whatever it's going to be, they need to stop shows like this from being able to call it out. You know, whatever they end up doing with with framing MAGA or Trump or whatever. We had a guy in North Dakota just kill a kid, mm. a teenager. You know, I'll call him a kid. He was 18 years old. 
ran him down, ran him over. He was drunk too. This guy was who was charged with the DUI. He was over the legal limit. Mm. Hit this kid and then claimed the kid was threatening him. I'm like, oh, the 18 year old kid was threatening you and your SUV when you ran him down. Sure, bro, you could have left. So they don't like when we call that out because they want the narrative to be like the FBI whistleblowers are pointing out that it's a bunch of MAGA extremists. But the reality is we got Antifa and BLM who've destroyed cities across this country a couple mm-hmm. of years ago. And like, yeah, there are some creepy weirdo right wingers that, that and, and there's some really extreme stuff that's happened around the world. But the overall terror and high numbers comes from the left, hands down. And they're desperately trying to lie about it. And they play dirty games like the ADL claims that like, it's the weirdest thing. If you're anti-government, you're right wing. And it's like, so like a, an Antifa extremist could be like, I'm anti-government. They go, well, he's a, he's a right wing anti-government guy. And it's like, bro, the guy's got a communist tattoo on it. No, he's anti-government. Anti-government is right wing. I mean, it, it's something how we had a summer in this country where in the 30 largest cities in, in, in this nation, you had synchronized riots synchronized riots right and then new york state's a perfect example where they just blanket pardoned everyone it's like oh what you set fire to a building what you 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 destroyed people's homes their businesses their livelihoods there's a blanket pardon i mean it's incredible it's incredible and and the way that it's like well i mean the riot's the voice of the unheard when it's folks on our side right i mean it's incredible it's incredible and they bail them out and, and they the, raise money. Kamala raises yeah. money to be like, well, let's get them out. And you had recidivists. You had people who got yeah. out from there, committed assault and rape after Kamala called for like cash to be sent. To just, just here's what you do. Next time there's going to be like a protest. We just need like 500 people to join Antifa. No, I mean it because it's all about it's all about the, the mob, right? If there's going to be like 100 people at an Antifa thing and they're all wearing hoodies and stuff. And then we're like, OK, we'll get 500 people. Those 500 people can be like, we vote not to throw the brick. And then, <laughs> then they're going to be like, uh, someone will throw it. And then the other anti will be like, you're a fascist. So basically, you like if you go in there and you're like, yeah, I'm on board with this Antifa thing. The moment you see someone trying to get violent or doing whatever, call them a fascist. Be like, hey, let's play the game too. And then stop them from doing it. Stop the violence. Stop the riot. Stop the, the hurting of innocent people. And I don't know. What are they going to do about it? Then the media will be like, Antifa stops violence within their own ranks. Yes, exactly. Like, oh, as long as it's not happening. <laughs> How yes. responsible. Yeah. You know, but fiery but mostly peaceful protests. Yeah. Well, they're like, well, their names are anti-fascist guys. That's right. Come on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're the good guys. You're the bad guys. We're the good guys. We like good thing. You That's like right. bad thing. That was Seamus's bit. Shout out to Seamus. Oh, yeah. Seamus, come his, back. His, his bit was that Democrats will be like, we want good thing. Yeah. We, we, we want good thing for everyone. And then you'll go, okay, well, how do you pay for a good thing? You want bad thing. Yep. You want bad thing. Exactly. Well, they're, they're, Calm down, dude. It is very interesting. Just I feel like it's just in like the last five years, maybe in the beginning of Trump, it went from like we disagree on policy to if you don't want this policy, you're for violence or you're killing people. Well, look at Matt Walsh. He's like Matt, Matt Walsh comes out and he's like, Vanderbilt Medical Clinic is doing surgeries on minors. And then they go, you're trying to kill people. That's the thing is they, they Calm they're down there. Dude. That's now become the, the first card that they pull is that if you disagree with me, people will die. You're advocating for <laughs> violence. <laughs> I'm just imagining like, here's a bit for you, Seamus, if you're listening. It can be like the day, a day in the life of a left wing activist. And it's like, hey, guys, uh, what do you want to get for dinner? I vote pizza. I want wings. I don't know if I want wings. If you disagree with me, we'll die. Yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah. It's just like, uh, okay. okay, dude, calm down. We'll but get you the can, wings. You can understand why there is so much left-wing violence when they truly believe those are the stakes, right? Yep. And if those are the stakes and, and you know, the, the rest of this machine sort of stokes that fire, if they really believe those are the stakes, what's the end of that? I mean, that, they, that wouldn't that wouldn't be worth it. This We're, is it. Is is you you get you get a left winger to to murder a kid? Right. That's th- this guy. That's you get the bur- you get the Bernie Sanders supporter gunning down those Republican lawmakers yeah. on the baseball diamond. Yep. So you certainly do have like creepy ultra ultra nationalist or traditional traditionalists who have committed atrocities for sure, but. What you see of with with terror from the left is extended and what I refer to as like blunt force or low tier, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, every couple of years or so, you might hear a story about some like unhinged, you know, quote unquote, right winger guy. And what I mean by that is like probably like an ultra traditionalist or nationalist who will shoot a bunch of people. It's terrifying. We don't we don't we want that to stop. The FBI should be tracking those people and, and stopping. That's what they should be doing. But what you get with the left is like 
on a daily basis, people getting punched in the head, shoved, attacked. Uh, Benny Johnson just had his podium kicked over by an unhinged lunatic. Uh, now it's starting to get more serious where this, this guy in North Dakota rams a kid mm -hmm. and he was drunk. And I'm just imagining, you know, maybe it's my bias, but I'm imagining this guy is seeing this kid and they're having a dance party. And he thought the kid was part of a Republican extremist group. Like, what is that even? Mm -hmm. But the fact that he even thought being a part of a Republican group made the kid extremist in some way, he was paranoid and delusional and drunk. And so he killed a kid. Mm. That's the, that's, that's, well, look, whatever you want to say, it's getting crazier out the, there. The president of his country had just appeared on TV not too long ago with this like horrific red background saying that Republican extremists are going to destroy democracy, right? And then on a daily basis, he sees left wing or uh, left wing groups, left wing individuals say, if you disagree with us, that's violence. Like, don't you realize by 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 showing that this group in Vanderbilt said that this is a profitable enterprise, that people are going to die, that like there's going to be death threats. Don't you realize that disagreeing with me is violence? They say they say if Republicans get back in power, that democracy is over. Yeah. If well, you truly believe that, what and what you know, what doesn't justify violence? Well, we're not a democracy. But if the Democrats retain power, the republic is over. That's right. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to Timcast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the Timcast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to Timcast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.